Swivels are a main piece of hardware used in fishing, but I don't think a lot of folks give it the thought that it deserves when it comes to uh, which type to use and when to apply it. So in today's video, we're going to break into the two basic types of swivels to examine the differences between the two of them, and then we're going to talk about the different applications that each of these types of swivels is used for. So stick around. Before we go on, uh, please remember to hit that like button, ring that bell to be notified of future videos, and hit that subscribe button. Uh, this helps the algorithm put this video in front of more viewers, and it really helps our channel out. Thanks. So the first type of swivel that we're going to discuss today is the barrel swivel. And it's called the barrel swivel because the coupler piece that joins the two ends of the swivel together looks like a barrel. So I cracked one of these swivels open with a vise so we could get a better look in the insides and uh, see what's going on in there and how this thing works. So as you can see, it's pretty simple. Uh, three main components, uh, the two terminal ends, which are simply a piece of wire twisted around itself with a flared end. And that flared end is what goes inside of the centerpiece known as the barrel. And it simply just it free floats in there so it allows it to spin or pivot as the uh, pressure from the terminal tackle um, is exerted on the end of the swivel. Here's a better look at the flared end of the uh, end of the swivel. And it, it, you can see it's a little marred up. That's just because I had it in the vise. It's obviously smooth um, when it comes out of the factory to allow it for the freest amount of movement inside of the barrel. And here's another look at the end of it from a different angle. So let's take a look at what's going on here. As tension is increased from your tackle and your line on the ends of the swivel, there is a frictional force that is created at the contact points between the stub ends of the swivel and the barrel itself. When a rotational force is now applied to the tackle end of the line, eventually it will overcome the frictional force on the barrel and the tackle will be allowed to turn without twisting your main line. So the other type of swivel that we're going to discuss today is the ball bearing swivel. And just as with the barrel swivel, I put this one in a vise to crack open the center so we can get a sense of what's inside of it. So here are the parts and pieces from the swivel. Uh, bulk, the bulk of the parts on the left are the pieces of the housing. Um, those are the parts that uh, encase the ball bearing mechanism. Next we have the two terminal ends of the swivel, the snap lock, and then the end that goes to the main line. And then finally we have the six ball bearings. So here's a cutaway to give you an indication of what the inside of this thing looks like. Um, as you can see, the upper end of the swivel is connected to the housing, while the lower end is connected to a rod with a flared end that catches the ball bearings. Uh, and then the, bar, the ball bearings rest between that flared end and the housing. And here's an animation of the ball bearing in action. As you can see, as the tackle end of the swivel starts to spin, the ball bearings uh, reduce the amount of friction compared to the uh, friction on the barrel swivel and allows the uh, tackle end of the swivel to spin more freely with less resistance. So when deciding which of the two swivels to use in a given application, it really comes down to cost. Um, the ball bearing swivel is always a better choice. So if you can afford it um, and, and cost is no obstacle, then the ball bearing swivel is what you should always use. But that's often not practical. And so in lighter duty applications, barrel swivels will work just fine. But I always like to use ball bearing swivels when I'm trolling. And that's because, you know, when your line is out there for, you know, half an hour to an hour at a time, uh, the last thing you want is to reel your line in an hour later and find out that the reason you weren't catching fish is because your swivel wasn't doing its job. So that's going to wrap it up for today. I hope you learned a thing or two about the two different types of swivels and when to use each type. And as always, thanks for watching.